Hey guys, Politics Gaming here, and today we're going to be discussing Perrin Revolution's political systems, how they work, and what can be done to appease internal domestic elements in your nation. We'll be discussing how the players should handle parliament, as well as how to work with various political ideologies of their own nation in order to more effectively manage the political affairs of their state. You can support tutorials like this by leaving a like, subscribing to the channel if you are new, and sharing this to help others understand the deep workings of the game. Before we dive into the specifics in each ideology, we must first understand what it means to have an ideology. I'm pretty sure most of you already understand what it is, but just to recap, political ideology is basically a set of values and or ideas which can drive political policy on a local, state, national, or even international level. In game, it essentially is a guidance for what laws can be proposed, what parties you can create coalitions with, and how easy it is to sign agreements with other nations. As of the 2021 edition, you can find every country's political ideology in the map icon here. This map shows you each nation's ideology according to the elected government, as well as its cabinet. If you share a similar color to another nation, it is easier to sign things like trade agreements and defense protocols. If you don't share it, or if the ideology is on the opposite side of the spectrum as you, your diplomatic relations with that nation will be more challenging and will require more time and effort to improve if you so desire. This map can give you an idea of what nations you can sign agreements with or what nations you can target in terms of bringing them closer towards your sphere of influence for geopolitical means. In Parliament, each party is divided by where they lie on the political spectrum. Parties actively holding seats in Parliament are sorted from left to right with Communist, Socialist, and Liberal parties found on the left, while conservatives, military, royalist, and extreme right are found on the right. Centrist parties can be found in the middle of parliament. This makes it a lot easier to find out who's the more extreme in parliament and gives you an idea of who's the best one to form a coalition with. Each party has a position on each policy or law in the game, as well as how vastly that policy can be changed. For example, playing as a conservative rightist will make it difficult for you to address social issues like gay marriage, housing reform, and raising taxes to lower the deficit as these parties right of center are by principle unable to agree with those policies. According to the manual, the process of how a law is passed is as follows. When a law is presented to Parliament, the different political groups position themselves as a function of several elements, such as alignment by group with respect to the law, the importance of the law, the alignment of the different members of the group with the head of state, and the alignment of the group with the relevant ministry. To calculate the final result of the vote, the result of each of the groups is weighed as a function of the representation in Parliament. When you cancel a bill, the people will remember your proposition and will punish you if they don't agree with you cancelling it. In the same way, a project that has been refused by Parliament is a snub for the head of state who will always lose some popularity points in the affair. There are also many ways for you to influence such votes in Parliament, which are the following. The first one is incentive. During a meeting, you can ask a parliamentarian to encourage the passage of such a law which will allow you to know how the parliamentarian intends to vote. If the parliamentarian accepts your proposition, it will increase the yes vote of the political group that he or she belongs to as a function of his or her influence on the group. This can be found here with the God and Spy tool. A party head has five times more influence on the members of his or her group than a regular member. The second one is a change in alignment. The alignments of parliamentarians with the head of state have an impact on the voting configuration. For example, you can try to change their opinion by flattering them during the meeting. Of course, the result depends on their own character, which can be evaluated through the Secret Service. The third one is blackmail. If you are aware of scandals concerning this parliamentarian thanks to your Secret Service, you can try to blackmail him or her by not exposing the scandal in exchange for his or her vote in favor of the law. The fourth one is corruption. You can also always try to propose bribes to the parliamentarian. This can be done carefully as any corruption attempt can turn against you if the parliamentarian is an honest person. It is strongly advised to hold a preliminary consultation with the Secret Service to be better informed of the parliamentarian's personality. The fifth one is the ministry. 
personality of the minister has an impact on the result of the vote. By changing ministers or forming new governments, notably that with a political leaning that is different from that of the player, the result of a vote can be changed and can sometimes be enough to swing this vote. And then the final one is laws with several stages. Sometimes it is possible to pass quantified laws, a tax for example, in several stages in order to obtain an objective, which would otherwise be refused by parliament if it were presented in one go. Moving on to an example of how parliaments can actually be pretty important depending on what kind of policy you want to go after. In a previous livestream series as a Republic of Georgia, I achieved total control over the parliament after the people of Georgia elected a completely conservative right and right-leaning parliament. However, whenever I was attempting to lower inflation via higher taxes, the parliament did not make it easy for me. In fact, it almost made it impossible to achieve control over the economy until the next election, which saw an increase in left-leaning parties being represented. Take into account what goals you have for your nation, your people, and to take into account the mood of both your party and your nation to strike the right balance. Complimenting or criticizing other parties and the political parties menu is the best way to make this happen. One thing not taken into consideration by players might be that the population of your nations have an ideology of their own. Even if your party agrees with you banning abortion, this will not necessarily mean you will not endure civil unrest due to this proposition. There is not too much information detailing what your population is thinking. One way to decipher this is by consulting the National Statistics Bureau to get more information on how your population thinks of your actions. This gives you a broad amount of topics you've affected with proposed laws. Another, more directly, is by introducing laws and testing to see what the reaction is. Playing a country enough times gives you this experience. If you know the country, generally take what you know about it in real life, then apply it to the thinking in your gameplay. For example, if your goal is to create a dictatorship, the course of action taken must be by gradually enacting a policy known as democratic backsliding. Democratic backsliding essentially means that in a democracy, it is possible for rights to be gradually taken away. One step, one law over the course of a year or more in game allows you to deal with the civil unrest and political pressure of this policy instead of introducing all laws at once and dealing with being thrown out of office within a few minutes. An addition of the 2021 edition, coalitions serve as a way to make it easier for the player to manage internal political affairs by creating alliances with similarly aligned political parties to their own. A coalition is an agreement by two or more political parties in the legislature of a country to work together toward a common goal otherwise known as a platform. The coalition serves multiple purposes, most importantly as a way to achieve a majority in parliament in the event the largest party does not gain enough seats in the election. If this does happen, the player will be notified by the Sovereign, King, or another character that the coalition must be formed to achieve a majority. The player must then gather enough parties to achieve at least 50, but preferably 51 to 60% of the parliament's seats. To form a coalition, a variety of factors are taken into consideration. If your party is the second largest party in parliament, this is an automatic loss for the game. The biggest thing to know is that when forming a coalition is to form one with parties that share your ideology. Therefore, this is what I recommend when forming one. First is to meet with another party's leader before asking them to form a coalition if it seems likely you're not going to win a majority in parliament. Get them to like you as much as possible or consider launching an investigation of the individual to gauge their affection for you. If you have God and Spy, take a look at the Loyalty Visa V Head of State which will give you an idea on how they see you. Next, it is time to form the coalition. Click the Form a Coalition button in your political parties, then select the party you want to partner with. Next, you'll be presented with the option of a common program. This gives you the option to propose to your partner party on a common platform to jointly campaign on. The specifics of what the propose will be discussed in a few moments. Afterwards, we have the option to propose ministerial posts. This allows us to propose ministries to our partner party on the promise to appoint them to the selected post. Now as tempting as it is to propose minor posts like culture, housing, sports, or family, this will actually end up in a rejection. To avoid this, 
Propose some high-level positions. Justice, education, health, defense, economy, foreign affairs, or even prime minister or vice president. A promise of at least one of these positions will suffice. When trying to form a coalition, it is wise to note that the ideology does matter. For example, if you are a center-left party in the United Kingdom, it is not wise to form a coalition with the far right. Even if this was possible or you could achieve this, and a coalition was formed successfully, implementing a center-left platform could draw criticism from your partner party and they would eventually leave this coalition before the next election. Therefore, it is recommended to form coalitions with similar ideologies. If playing as a center-left party as mentioned, you can form with parties in your immediate vicinity as listed earlier. This would be center, socialist, and possibly the communist or center-right parties. Take note that these parties must be present in parliament as per the last election, and remember that these parties immediately next to your own as presented here are who you'd most likely have a better time partnering with. As stated before, it is important to know what the common program of the coalition should be. This is completely dependent on what your ideology is. If the player is controlling a right-wing party, you can promise the coalition some lower taxes, lower corporate taxes, etc. A left-wing party coalition should promise some liberal policies, namely higher corporate taxes, gay marriage, greater welfare, etc. Once an agreement is reached, your party and the target party will notify you in a notifications bar found on the left. Keep in mind that when the election is over and a coalition must be formed, the game gives you 30 days to reach this agreement, so usually this must be done pretty quickly. The coalition will then expect you to appoint ministerial posts within that week. If the offices promised are already taken, you must then fire that minister, then appoint your promised post to that party. This will usually tank your approval rating, so be prepared for that. Once ministry posts are made, the coalition will give you a three-month timeline to get promised programs approved by the parliament. If neither of these goals are met, the game will notify you that the coalition has collapsed due to either of those reasons. Lastly, it is important to note that if your platform during your tenure strays from the coalition's approval, the coalition has the chance of collapsing if the related party's leader disapproves of the player. In all, coalitions are a way to stay in government in the event your party does not win enough seats in the parliamentary system to maintain a majority. It's a fun way to have a little bit more interaction with your political system, but it adds to the political instability and micromanagement if you tend to ignore your own party or the party that you are coalitioned with. In this section, we will discuss each known political ideology as it is shown on the mini-map as well as a few extra ideologies that are present in-game. We will start off by discussing some of the secondary parties such as religious and regional parties. First one is religious parties. In-game, religious parties often thrive in nations in the Gulf region as well as Iran which have religious or theocratic backing. This depends on the starting nation and what their constitution is written as. In the religions option, you can find established state power with regard to religion and determine the level of religious freedom. The former decides on how religion plays a role in your government, and the latter decides how other religions are allowed to operate in your nation. Iran is considered a full theocracy in the former's regard, with rules and commandments of the official religion incorporated into the constitution being the default option. Religious parties often can relate to right and far-right parties in regards to policy with strict adherence to the majority religion's order or whatever religion is selected by the player when selecting this party as seen here. The next one is regional parties. Regional parties tend to derive support from the autonomy or independence of a region. Such regional parties have various political alignments, so this depends on the nation you're in or from what you create. Active regional parties include the Scottish National Party in the United Kingdom as well as the Democratic Unionist in Northern Ireland. In some cases, entities that have no independence or parliamentary representation but have aspirations to acquire it operate underground terrorist cells which wreak havoc on your nation through small to large scale terrorist attacks. An example of this are the South Ossetia and Abkhazia Free Front movements in the Republic of Georgia. This gives you two options, sign a peace treaty which gives them such representation or increase funding to your secret services tab to end their operations. Third up, we have ecologists, also known as the Greens in some nations. These are environmentalist progressive political movements which aspire to fight climate change as well as move on quote, progressive ideals such as laxed abortion laws, strong environmental reforms, green energy, and generally left-wing policies. They also eye greater funding for healthcare, welfare, and other similar policies. 
An example would be the Green Party in the United States and the Greens in the Federal Republic of Germany. Altermondalism, otherwise known as alter globalization, is a social movement which supports global cooperation and interaction but opposes globalization's quote negative effects. Altermondalists feel that globalization works to the detriment of workers, the environment, labor rights, civil liberties, and other issues. There are currently no governments in game with altermondalist governments, but before 2018, Greece's government was marked as an altermondalist ideology. Their main issues will probably pertain to higher minimum wage, lower payroll taxes for employees, greater funding toward environmental protocols, and greater funding to welfare. Next is totalitarian extreme left. This is the most extreme left ideology you can find in GPS4, which can be found in Angola, Eritrea, Burma, and Syria. You'll find that they support higher taxes on middle and high incomes, nationalizations of economic sectors, no homosexuality, no assisted suicide, no cannabis, prostitution, strict media control, as well as a strict hold on individual rights. Basically, they support strong state control and even ownership of the economy, as well as a strict adherence to state authority in general. An example of this would be the Burmese government, which in February 2021 was overthrown in a coup and is now led by the military. Up next is communism. There are two types of communism in game. Both effectively have the same outlook in terms of policies enacted, with a few key differences. One of them can be considered to be authoritarian communism, while the other is ideologically communist with the less authoritarian roots. Communists tend to support nationalizations of the economic sectors, state intervention in the education system, as well as a strong police force in the state. Typically, the focus is state control of the economy with an emphasis placed on limiting private ownership in exchange for public ownership where the government redistributes the majority of that nation's wealth on the behalf of its people. States with either communist system are usually the People's Republic of China and as well as some Southeast Asian nations like Vietnam and Laos. Next up is the socialist ideology, the most common type of left-leaning political ideology in the game. Laws supported by socialist parties include the nationalizations, some strict laws pertaining to freedom of expression, as well as strong support for unions and associations. Although socialism is somewhat concerned with wealth redistribution and some state control of the economy, their main focus is on citizen and worker benefits paid for by the state as a means to assist social progress, provide a safety net for the poor, or just a better deal for workers. This can be in the form of resources or in the form of laws that are intended to protect those who may be vulnerable. This party is the first in this list that begins to support more freedoms. Take note that the closer to the center you are, the more your party supports freedom and opposes authoritarianism. The further from the center, the more authoritarian it becomes and less democratic. Examples for socialist countries are the various African nations like South Africa, Algeria, Tanzania, and as well as European nations like Germany, Spain, Portugal, all Nordic nations, Taiwan, and Indonesia. Our first party in the center is center left, a very common liberal party which is extremely common to see as one of the largest parties in Western democracies. Countries that have this party that commonly comes into power are the United States, the United Kingdom, as well as most Western European nations. This party supports policies such as the liberalization of laws, support for the legalization of marijuana, minor shareholder nationalization of the economic sectors, and support for the regularization of illegal immigrants. They especially oppose deportations, funding for police budgets, and as well as the increase of funding of the military. They also support the banning of the death penalty and somewhat support the legalization of assisted suicide. Up next is Center. This party can be considered the most neutral, quote unquote, of all the parties. Usually they have equal support for what they can be considered liberal and conservative policies. Nations that have this party in power are France and Ukraine. Support for policies include moderate increases to welfare, liberalization of freedoms, and the privatizations of economic sectors. The first party which is right of center brings us to a side of the spectrum which begins to overtly support lower taxes, the regression of some social policies, and less environmentalism. In addition to lower taxes, the right typically favors less state involvement in general and supports traditional social institutions. Their approach to the economy and social mobility is one that asserts the best way to generate the wealth of a nation is to let the people and businesses keep more of that wealth 
to expand and invest with less restrictions from the government. They tend to be more fiscally concerned, but sometimes at the expense of funding social programs sufficiently. Policies supported by center-right parties tend to include the liberalization of rights, however, they do not support things like abortion, lower taxes, privatization of the economic sectors, It also begins to trend toward police funding, military spending, and some support for stronger integration systems, minor support for regularization of illegal immigrants, and some support for deportations. Examples for this ideology include Mali, Pakistan, Slovakia, Armenia, Canada, and Colombia. Up next is right. We begin to find increased support for some previous policies stated before in this ideology. Nations that have this include the United Kingdom, Iran. Policies supported by this party include higher support for strong immigration measures, full privatization of economic sectors, lower public spending, lower employer taxes, and less support for gay marriage. And one of the most common parties that we can find in the game is conservative rightism. This ideology is essentially the Republican Party of the United States, as well as the National Party in Australia. This ideology is very supportive of lower taxes, less rights on abortion, gay marriage, less government interference in the economic sectors, as well as less public spending. However, they do support more funding for the military, police, and less environmental spending. For taxes, they support less taxes for all brackets except the lowest. Lowering the company tax, employer social security tax, and the gun tax will also please this party. Lastly, they support deportations, tighter controls on immigration, and less welfare benefits. Other examples include India, Russia, Japan, and Turkey. Next up is extreme right. This ideology is present in Oman, some parts of Africa, but most famously is the ideology of Jair Bolsonaro in Brazil. This party is the first on the right which generally supports strict controls on freedom, a strong military, as well as total control of political freedoms by the government. This ideology will also support the player banning other parties and will even support the backsliding of democracy in some cases. Liberal policies such as greater welfare, more public and social spending will not be supported by this party. Other examples include Iran, Oman, Rwanda, and Burundi. Next up is authoritarian military. Usually the ideology of military leaders who take over after coups or long-lasting dictatorships, this ideology generally or wholly supports the backsliding of democracy in most or all cases. This party supports greater spending on defense, less rights and political freedoms, political repression, less or no rights relating to unions and protesting, as well as any policy that does not undermine the rule of the party. In game, sometimes militaries take over in times of crisis, then hand back power to the civilian government after the next election, and other times militaries maintain their control of the government and never let go. Examples include Egypt, Afghanistan, both Sudans, and Thailand. Lastly, we have Royalist. The furthest to the right, Royalist parties tend to be exclusive to nations with monarchies or if the player changes the appropriate laws to create one themselves. A monarch's right to rule relies on the ideology of birthright or right by the ancestral inheritance and are not elected but rather ascend to their seat of power as a successor to their father or mother before them and have to rule for life unless deposed. This party, present in the Arabian Peninsula as well as Eswatini, aims to suppress anything that undermines the royalist elements in the nation. This includes anything such as political parties, right to criticizing the state, as well as the right to criticize religion if the nation is a theocracy. Most of the times, especially in the nations described above, parliament will have little to zero power under this ideology and you will rule by decree. This tutorial is meant to show you the different types of ideologies in game, as well as to help you understand the tightrope that is the internal political struggles you can endure while playing this game. Power and Revolution is a deep, intricate game which can challenge your knowledge on economics, politics, as well as foreign policy. I will release more videos like this soon, so share this video, like the video, and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and help the channel out by becoming a member of the channel, donating to my cash app linked in the channel links found here, also, go to my Patreon, support me on Patreon if you can. Thank you so much for checking this video out, and I'll see you in the next one.